we talked about the opportunities and the gaps um, and, the, and, and the fact that, you know, if you think about it, like now, for instance, uh, urbanization rate in, in Kenya alone is, you know, 4.3% per annum. So at that rate, we have to just accept that it cannot be business as usual. Um, the resources that are available uh, locally are insufficient, um, whether it's from national government transfers or the county's own source of revenue. So therefore, you know, the different um, uh, scenarios that we painted before, you know, focus a lot more on using other people's money, um, you know, focus on PPPs. How do you utilize project finance mechanisms, you know, in this case, um, you know, through PPPs to then um, roll out the necessary infrastructure, um, you know, over the long term. So we have, um, you know, we, we have a robust piece of legislation that is currently, you know, likely to be overhauled, but even the proposed um, overhauling will be for um, really for the benefit of the country in the sense that some of the gaps that we had identified, um, you know, several years ago and that we feel have been um, a hindrance um, towards um, implementation of, uh, or, you know, fast tracking implementation of PPPs will be addressed. So we're, we're looking at definitely um, encouraging a lot more focus on um, our PPPs and project finance as a, as a, an infrastructure delivery mechanism. And, um, and that would really, really um, allow the counties and, and the cities to, to leverage on other people's money. We know this has been done successfully in the transportation um, areas, water, sanitation, the hard infrastructure, but also several jurisdictions, even where you come from, have utilized it for softer infrastructure, you know, hospitals, and, and um, which, which is a devolved function of, 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 of government, um, as well as education, you know, some education institutions and facilities are also devolved. So hopefully this is something that can be encouraged a lot more. Definitely um, with increased capacity building and better management of the cities and urban <laughs> areas, you know, um, these cities then can then, you know, approach the capital markets. We want to see more infrastructure bonds and city bonds by Nairobi. I mean, there's no reason why we haven't got it to that level. Um, you know, we can be singing the same song and not actually getting our act together. So hopefully in the future, this really has to be something that, that is, um, you know, that, that is uh, um, properly, you know, uh, tapped into. And then of course, like we've said, the development fees, um, it's something new, it's something there has been a bit of resistance, but if properly implemented, will definitely address a much needed gap. And people need to know that you can't just develop, you know, um, you know, you, you, you can't go putting up huge structures on four acres of land. You've got six towers of 30 stories and nobody's talking about the impact on traffic. Nobody's talking about the impact on water and sanitation infrastructure. It, it's like, you know, it, it's really, really puzzling. So as we get to that point of long-term planning, proper plans, then you have a situation where, you know, as a developer, you're working with the city to figure out where you can plug in as opposed to the city trying to catch up with you. So I really do hope that um, that with time, um, this will, will happen and, um, and, and that citizens themselves then demand a lot more accountability, transparency. You know, they want predictability. I want to know that I'm not going to, to wake up and my nice area that I've been living in all of a sudden has, you know, has become a high density um, area with no infrastructure to, to, to go for it. So urbanization is here to stay um, and increasingly so, uh, rural mi uh, urban migration is here to stay and our cities just need to, 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 to stay ahead of the game and we hope that they will.